Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries this year at the Hanover Fairground in the year of 2015. Every 15 minutes you will hear interesting presentations regarding the hydrogen industry. I'd also like to welcome our online guests. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. We are live streaming here from the fair, so welcome to these guests as well. There is a lovely lady walking around and serving you complimentary drinks. So if you just want a drink, raise your hand and she will come by your place. Our next topic will be making power from a hydrogen storage material from battery replacement to bulk power applications and for that please welcome with me on stage project manager at seller energy mr christopher hobbs big hands please good morning ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much my name is Chris Hobbs. Uh, I'm at Seller Energy as a project manager, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a safe, low-cost hydrogen storage uh, system based on ammonia brain technology. So, we have developed a plastic-like pellet-formed material based on ammonia brain, which is capable of delivering one liter of hydrogen per gram of material. Now, one of the important factors related to this technology is the fact that by making it a plastic-like pellet form material, we managed to make the actual material now a low toxicity um, capability, which means it can be handled as shown on the photograph here. By heating the material to just over 100 degrees C, the hydrogen within the material can be released in between one to two minutes in a safe, low pressure, non-cryogenic way. The material itself is stable down to up to 50, uh, below 50 degrees C and it also has the capability of being regenerated chemically in due course. So why would you want to use this technology? Well, in terms of comparing the actual cellar material to lithium ion based technologies, you have three times the energy density capability available, and you also have a flexible form factor, as you'll see as we go through the presentation. Also, as I've already mentioned, it is a very safe and stable technology, uh, given the way we have produced it. And in terms of com uh, comparison to compressed hydrogen systems, it is both safe, stable, and lower cost, as again we will see, and significantly less infrastructure is required. In terms of the applications that we feel that this technology will be working its way into, there are three areas, uh, and these relate very much to the same uh, areas that our previous speaker was talking about. So there are what we term the small energy systems, which is less than six kilowatts, that covers the UAV market, portable systems, specifically in the military area, and for electrical scooters. Then you have the medium energy range, which is less than 20 kilowatt. Uh, that will work in the aerospace arena for things like APUs. It will work on emergency power systems, and it will work in electrical vehicle range extension systems. And finally, there is the large energy based systems of greater than 20 kilowatts, and that will cover off things like forklifts, zero emission buses, and zero emission vehicles. So, starting off with the small-scale systems, and one of the uh, areas that we're very active in and are showing a lot of interest to us is the UAV market. Uh, as you're probably well aware, the mini and micro and small UAVs have taken off very substantively in recent years, and people are looking to actually grow the range at which these can actually be operated and also the duration for which they can be flown. One of the benefits that we offer, as I've already said, is the capability of being able to provide three times the amount of power based on the weight um, for a lithium ion system. And so you can actually run it for three times as long. And as I mentioned previously, you have the capability of creating of any form factor that you require. So in the picture on the left hand side here, you'll actually see the material being built into an aerofoil. So what you have is the pellets sitting in an actual aluminum manifold. It then sits within its uh, buffered foam material. And then below that, you will actually see a heater backing. And the important thing here is that we do not activate all the pellets at the same time. We act them individually on a pre-prescribed -pre sequence. Each pellet releases its hydrogen. The hydrogen is then used to drive a fuel cell. And then when that uh, hydrogen is becoming expended, the next pellet is actually um, initiated, and so on and so forth. The material, as I've already stated, is stable. It will not lose its um, credibility with time. And the cartridge, as we've already said, can be made to any shape. And here we've actually shown it being made into a uh, form of an aerofoil. 
So unmanned aerial vehicles are becoming very important. They obviously have a whole range of different sectors to operate in, as is shown on the left-hand side, from the military and security areas right through to first responders and environmental audits. But I think the most important thing to bear in mind in the UAV market is it's being rapidly deregulated right across the world, and America is taking the, for the real lead in that. And it's a very large market in terms of its economic impact, not only the number of sales of UAVs themselves, but what they will do for us. And it's expected to actually create tens of billions of dollars of, of benefit to the world economy between 2015 and 2025. And so anything that gives you range and duration extension is of great importance and is of great interest. And just to put some perspective on that diagram, now you see on the left-hand side an actual image of the aerofoil being created. So you actually have the, uh, the pellets being put down on top of the actual circuit boards there and the material, uh, the insulation material being placed here that was then be placed on top of those pellets. This actual system was flown as part of a wing section from an air environment Raven system. Uh, and you can see the air environment system uh, running here in our laboratory. We're now working with some collaborators through an Innovate UK program, which is actually looking to actually provide a UAV development for a marine application. The interesting thing with a marine application is the UAV needs to fly at uh, long endurance for a long time, um, and it's also a long line of sight. So anything that can, again, be done to extend that range and that capability is of interest. And we're working with our collaborators, SAMS, the Scottish Association of Marine Science, and our Kohler Energy to actually provide a whole system. And that is due for delivery August, September of this year in terms of a demonstration program. And here we actually see the, the actual generator itself. So you actually have the pellet-based versions here. You actually have a gaseous volume uh, here where the actual hydrogen uh, is collected. And then the filtering system here to actually uh, pass the hydrogen through before it goes onto the fuel cell. And that shows really what it looks like, and that's being actually fitted into the body of a UAV without having to actually restructure the UAV itself. In terms of other battery replacement technologies, what I've just laid out here, uh, and as you'll see as you work your way through the actual figures, is it's very typical of what battery systems do in terms of their voltage, in terms of their storage temperatures, in terms of their operating powers. So it's important to see that it can be used as a direct replacement. And here we have on the left at the bottom uh, matches for lower power systems around about the uh, 100, uh, 1 kilowatt system and matches for a 2 kilowatt extended system which is an extended system. So in terms of a 2 kilowatt demonstrator um, this is the size of canister that we would use for that. It's about 25 millimeters in diameter. They'd be stored in a magazine and the magazine would sit uh, in here. This is a demonstrator proof of concept system these drop into a, effectively a, a, a rotating mandrel. That rotating mandrel takes one of these actual cartridges down. An actuator places it into a hot cell. The hot cell generates the hydrogen from the actual canister itself. And that's then driven off to a fuel cell to provide you with your power. And as it says at the bottom, the system is capable of giving you between one and two kilowatts of energy, depending on the way you actually structure the diameter cartridges themselves. This is leading to something called the Electric Vehicle Range Extender, which is a UK government grant through Innovate UK, a £1.1 million project cost with collaboration from Coventry University, Microlab, the Motor Industry Research Association in the UK, University College at London, and Productive. But the most important point from our point of view is the fact that the steering committee contains several very high-profile automotive organisations, so they're showing great interest in the capability. Now, in terms of the way we'll deliver the actual um, technology itself, this will be an effectively a magazine, which will hold a series of canisters, which will be individually placed into a hot cell, uh, passing then through a filter and out to the fuel cell system. And to give you some perspective, this is the actual size of the canister itself. That's, this will deliver you 200 litres of hydrogen when it's fully expended, and its weight is around about 200 grams. So there's a large focus on fuel cell technology. Uh, fuel cell vehicles are becoming increasingly available and will be so over the next few years, and they'll become affordable in doing so. Prototype vehicles must have the same performance and range as gasoline vehicles, otherwise they're not really going to be able to cable to go to market. But the early markets that people are identifying are, are the more heavier areas, the forklifts and the heavy lift vehicles. 
One key problem with hydrogen, as probably you're aware, is the, uh, around the infrastructure that is needed to actually house it. Uh, and as this King Re Review report stated, there is a difficulty with the actual um, capability in terms of storage, whether it be via a gas cylinder or provisioned by a much larger um, uh, system itself, which can be large and expensive. Now, one of the benefits that our material has, it can, it be, it can be formed into millimetre-sized pellets. And when they're at that size, they can actually flow like a fluid, which means you can then flow them just like you would do a normal fuel, just by adapting that into a two-pipe rather than a single-pipe system. So you can transport it via a tanker, you can deliver it via a hose system, and you can actually pump that in and out of an actual vehicle in a time that is not dissimilar to what you would normally fuel a car in at the mom moment. The refueling itself will be done using a simple vacuum pump system, which can be built into the current infrastructure, and tests using simple cyclone type technology show that this could be done within a few minutes. Importantly also is to note there are no thermal issues with this transfer, and the energy's powers needed to do that are small, which is again important to the system. And the concept in principle is that you have your fuel store, so you have your material sitting in here. There'll be a pellet pump that takes it to a hot cell, and the hot cell is where you actually get the hydrogen uh, evolved off of the material. That will pass through to a hydrogen buffer, and that will then be sent onto a fuel cell to power it. In using the hot cell, obviously the material will then be expended, so that is then pumped back to the fuel store as a repository of used material, and that used material will then be sucked out of the actual um, tank using the two-pipe system, which is flowing back in the uh, renewed material coming back from the fuel pump. And if you care to actually come to our stand, uh, which is D D56 here in Hall 27, you actually see a much better actual um, live demonstration of that to the wall, showing how the pumping of the actual system into and out of the vehicle would happen. So as it says on the left-hand side, the batch of beeves are pumped into the hot cell. The beeves are heated and the hydrogen is driven out, again taking two to three minutes to do that. The beads are then pumped back into the top store and then replenished through a, a normal refueling cycle. And the ref refueling cycle is given there. And the important thing to take away is it's not dissimilar to how people work at the moment in terms of going to a petrol station, uh, picking up fuel. Um, the only difference here is effectively they'll be delivering some materials back into the system, but that is something that can be engineered. Now, one practicality of that is, of course, the cost. It's not going to take off if the cost is uh, abhorrent compared to the current costs. Uh, and it has to be said at the current time, there is a considerable difference between uh, an actual compressed hydrogen system and a system based on our own technology. But having looked at the actual capabilities that there are in the future, uh, we actually believe that by 2025, the figures will not be very dissimilar in terms of their actual capability. So there's some way to go, but there are programs in place, and we are part of those, like we said, with the LREF program, to actually achieve that capability in a reasonable time scale. And in terms of total cost of ownership, by 2030, effectively, fuel cell electric vehicles powered by our own material will be comparable with compressed gas systems uh, of a similar capability. And in terms of wheel-to-wheel -wheel analysis, people are also very concerned about CO2, and of course electric vehicles offer the most capability there in terms of reducing our emissions consumption. As you'll see here, a vehicle based on cellular hydrogen technology uh, is not very dissimilar. It's slightly more CO2, but not very much more. And the benefit of the cellular hy the hydrogen system is it can be used for range extension of the electric vehicles, so you can have effectively the best of both worlds. By combining the actual cellular material with an electric vehicle, you can extend the range um, and, and also have the capability to actually be able to use a, a low carbon system. I also talked about emergency power systems, and this is an actual um, schematic of what we are working on in terms of providing what we term a single cartridge container unit. You actually have the cell material as a cartridge, the filter over the top of that, and then you can actually put two together to actually form a system up to 10 pressure bar, and that can sit effectively as an APU. So in terms of where we're at at the moment, the material is ready, it is handleable, and we produce it regularly. In terms of proof of concept devices, you've actually seen one of the uh, systems we've done for an air environment, Raven. We're nearing completion of commercial prototype projects in terms of the, the project with uh, Innovate UK uh, on the UAV system for the marine applications. And we're starting to get to field trials at the end of this winter, beginning of next winter, uh, next spring, sorry, in terms of field trials on vehicles themselves. So um, hopefully you'll see that we are making good progress towards the actual material technology itself being both capable, available, and cost-effective. 
Well, it's been a very rapid canter through uh, our capabilities and the material. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much. And if you have any more questions, do ask them. If there's not time to do that, then do visit us, please, on uh, stand, 50, uh, stand 56 here in Hall 27. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hobbs, also from my side. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? I might have missed the uh, actual material itself, if you could please describe it again. Yes, it's an ammonia-based material, ammonia material, but we use a plastic-type material with it to actually stabilise it. Any other questions at this time? Then thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hobbs. Thank you very much for your interesting presentations. For detailed questions, you can visit them at booth number D56. Thank you very much. Big hands, please. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We'll now have a short break in the technical forum. This afternoon, we'll continue with our topics all regarding hydrogen production and energy storage. Unfortunately, there's one presentation that is postponed to Thursday. So at 1.20, the power management of fuel cells and electrolyzers and hybrid applications by Flexiva will be postponed to Thursday, 10.40. We will continue at 1 o'clock here in the technical forum with the hydrogen in a sustainable energy system, a combination of storage and medium, and medium storage and fuel from the DWV, Deutscher Wasserstoff und Brennstoffzellenverband. Exactly in one hour back here in the technical forum at the group exhibit, hydrogen fuel cells and batteries.